measure down 18 and a half inches from the top of the rain curtain header. The third drywall screw should be installed at this point. Finally, hang the picture in position. Time to install this peewee spotlight. Begin by disconnecting the base of the spotlight and screw that base into the drapery board in the ceiling near the stage center line and reattach the spotlight. Now remove two green floodlights. Replace the floodlight closest to the spotlight with a screw-in outlet receptacle. Now plug the spotlight into the receptacle and then wire tie the dangling cord to the ceiling. Finally, aim the spotlight at the cuckoo clock and lock it into position. Now it's time for you to begin the installation of Robot Clunk himself. Begin by disassembling Clunk's disconnect on his valve bank. When the disconnect comes apart, use masking tape to cover both ends. This will keep the O-rings in place and will keep any dirt or debris out. Unbolt Uncle Clunk from his dolly and put the dolly aside for later use. Now, with the help of an assistant or two, carry Uncle Clunk on stage. Clunk will fit nicely over the cutout in the carpet. This is the hardware needed to bolt clunk to the stage floor. Now use a one quarter inch drill bit to drill out pilot holes in the floor. If you happen to drill into a joist, make note of it and use lag bolts instead of through bolts. When you finish drilling with a larger 3 8 inch drill bit the second time around, bolt clunk to the stage. In order to make the next step easier, disconnect Clunk's aluminum right foot from his leg. Now place the foot over the mark on the carpet and drill out the four holes. Now reassemble the foot and the leg and locate Clunk's rubber tennis shoe and the fiberglass insert. Place Clunk's right foot over the insert and shoe and then bolt it all onto the floor. Now move to the back of the chair in order to clear a three inch wide hole in the stage for the plumbing harness to pass through. Here, two smaller holes were drilled side by side. As you pass the plumbing harness through, be careful not to crimp any of the air lines.
When you're finished, be sure to wire tie those airlines to the base of Clunk's chair. Before going beneath the stage to hook Clunk up, locate the table and guest chair. Drill and bolt them into position in the same manner as you did with Uncle Clunk. Now hand Clunk's valve banks beneath the stage. There you will reconnect them to the quick disconnects that are waiting. Now carefully remove the masking tape you put on to keep the dirt out and the O-rings in place. Now check to see that every O-ring is still there. And then reconnect the quick disconnects and the valve banks. And as you do this, be certain the airlines are aligned properly. When you have finished, locate the airlines for the abomination sign and the cuckoo clock. Also find the main airline. Now connect them to the valve bank according to the printed instructions. When this is complete, you may air up the show. Now be sure you check for possible leaks when you turn the air on. Locate the clunk controller and place it into position underneath the stage through the trap door. Locate the two output ribbon cables attached to the controller and plug them into the interface as shown. The lower cable, J3, attaches to the left hand board, movements 1 through 15. The upper cable, J2, plugs into the right hand board, movements 16 through 30. Now find the 60-foot RCA phono cable and plug one end into the phono jack connector on the computerized tape reader board inside the controller. After closing the controller doors, run the phono cable back through the wall into the control room and the excess cable should be left under the stage. Now at this point, turn the controller off and then plug it into the extension cord. Now run the extension cord up through the stage near the center line and then plug it into the outlet on the back wall. Also be sure to tack down the carpet with a stapler and then paint the extension cord flat black. Now move into the control room in order to complete the controller hookup. Locate the Y funnel connector you have been supplied with and plug it into the number three output on the top deck. Here's a close up repeat of what you need to do. The 60-foot RCA phono cable that you plugged into the computerized tape reader board in the clunk controller should now be plugged into one female jack of the Y connector. Plug the existing phono plug into the other jack. Now turn on the power switch of the clunk controller and check to see that the two recessed LEDs in the upper right-hand corner of the front of the box are on. The upper LED indicates the 5 volt power supply is on, the lower one the 24 volt power supply. Wheel out your video test equipment so you can see the monitor and clunk at the same time and connect the 8 foot RCA phono cable provided for the clunk VCR from the audio output number 2 on the VCR to the jack on the computerized tape reader board inside the controller. 